Hey guys, this is Hell Hades. This is going to be another raid Shadow Legends video. Guys, we are amidst a spider tournament, and I figured it would be a good time, not done this in a while, to call out some of my favorite champions for spider and why they're good. Generally, spider is all about building a team that synergizes together. So depending on your roster, it won't just be pick five of these, it'll be, it'll be pick five that work together to get the job done. So these are going to be based on you being trying to compete with like spider 15 to 20 okay anything before spider 15 you just want to aoe nuke as much as you can try and get some turn meter control in but once you pass stage 15 you're pretty much going for enemy max hp abilities you're going for turn meter reduction you're trying to get some drop to um drop defense in there and you are trying to find a comp that's got something like an hp burn for your damage if you can do it so there's a number of different kind of ways you can go so we're going to pick out first my top five uncommons i'm going all cold brew on you guys uncommons who's good shield guard is good he's for me he's the weakest of the good ones because all he's really got is this kind of aoe slam uh, ability so he's defense based he can stay alive he's neutral affinity to 20 but he can come in and kind of nuke the spiderlings down in terms of doing aoe damage he doesn't give a lot more he does give us a kind of decreased speed a one small one it's okay um, it's a reasonable percentage chance to land it the reason why he's good and all of the uncommons are good is because you can farm their books from the market you know from wherever really so it's a super cheap way to get somebody in that can do some aoe damage but for me he's low key compared to the others that we're going to mention so next one on the list is going to be zephra sniper uh same faction actually zephra sniper so again defense based a much higher base defense um aoe a1 and a heal on her a2 so the reason why she's so good is she can be your spiderling tank and i prefer to build mine with Good amount of resist, like 250 resist, defense, and then basically put her in lifesteal gear and she will AoE, keep her life up whilst um, she tanks the spiderling's damage. If you can imagine, poison hurts more than the hit. Poison is based on your percentage of your overall health. So if you let her take a load of poisons, she is going to die. What you need to do is you need to get a resistance up so she doesn't take the poisons and then she will live. She's a really good champ. So that's two. Um, we're going to go for my kind of newfound joy, which is Elfguard. So Elfguard, I've been doing a bit of work with on Doom Tower, but she's equally good here. So she's going to come in and she will reduce the turn meter of the main spider by 50%. It doesn't mean she's going to half the turn. Uh, she's going to take a chunk of 50% off of a turn meter. It means wherever that turn meter is when she does this skill, it will halve. So if it's nearly full, it'll come down to half. If it's like half full, it'll come down to a quarter. Yeah, is that making sense? But it's still a really good skill, and it's on a two-turn cooldown if you book it out, which is very cool. So you don't want her to tank any damage. You want to make sure her HP is, is up above your tank. But good A2 skill, really low cooldown for it, and she brings a weak source decrease attack for if the boss has a turn. So Elf Guard comes in as another useful uncommon. Now, I said I was going to give you five. Uh, where's this guy? I'm actually going to give you this guy twice. That's how good he is. Armika comes in as four and five. I, I couldn't really find another one that I thought was really relevant. There's a couple that, which are half decent, like Commander is half decent in Banner Lords that could have made the cut in terms of um, bringing in a heal and filling some turn meters. It's actually quite a cool ability. But yeah, Armada comes in as four and five because he's just so good. Um, again, use, use the market, use your mystery shards to book him up, get him booked. He does need more stats than your elf guard. He needs accuracy. So take the dungeon level you're fighting times and times it by 10. So if you're fighting stage 17, you want 170 accuracy minimum. Fight stage 20, you want 200 minimum. So he needs accuracy. He needs crit rate. He needs to crit to reduce turn meter. So accuracy, crit rate. He needs speed to rotate through his abilities as quick as possible. 
and he needs defense. He can be your tank. He can be your tank, but you don't want him to die because he's doing such a lot of work on the main spider. So he needs quite a lot of stats. Um, and yeah, you need, to, you need to make sure you've got gear, perception gear particularly good on him because it will fulfill the speed and the accuracy set. But um, yeah, you do need quite a lot of stats on him, but he's actually awesome. So Armager comes in as my fourth and fifth uncommon. Let's get on to the, um, onto the rares. So this guy is just a beast. Nullhorn, he's so underrated in the game. He's, he's insane. AoE Provoke, it gets placed. So it doesn't matter what level of, um, of spider you're doing, he's always going to place his Provoke. Doesn't matter the affinity you're up against, he will always place it. So places Provoke for one turn, puts increased defense on himself. And then the next ability does makes him unkillable. You don't need to book this guy, but it helps if you do just to rotate to that provoke again quicker. You don't want your attack, um, your damage dealers to end up taking some hits. Uh, he's, he's got an A1, which doesn't really do a huge amount, to be honest. It can't crit or anything. So don't build any damage on this guy at all. Just build defensive stats. Uh, he's also bringing a really big defense aura for dungeons. It's huge. 27%. It's massive. So this guy comes in, absolute beast, just gives your damage dealers enough time to do their job. Okay, next one up is going to be the one and only. Can't do a, a guide like this without talking about Apothecary. Why is he so good? Basically, he's speeding you up and he's healing your team. Those two things are just insane. So whoever your tank is, he's got a big juicy heal that can crit. So you can actually put high crit on him and he'll, and he'll heal more. But I would suggest just go as fast as you can. Rotate through his abilities as, as quick as possible. You can even run him as your tank. So on certain levels where you're taking a lot of damage. Or sorry, when it's, when it's not, when you're fighting against uh, force affinity. He could be a high defense, high HP tank um, and just heal himself. So he can do that job really well. Again, just get, him, get these spiderlings away from your damage dealers. So he can do that job really well. He doesn't need any accuracy in his kit, which means you can build more speed and more defense um, and more HP and, and keep him alive much easier. So next one up is going to be Soulbond Boya. Insanely good rare. Insanely good. Um, you've got a full, turn, or sorry, 75% chance of depleting the target's turn meter in full. Okay. Uh, it's also got an additional chance to crit, so you can build slightly lower crit and still get some good hits, but you want the accuracy to be high enough to, to deplete turn meter. There's a lot of books here. She does benefit from the books. If you get these books on, then it becomes a 100% chance to drop that turn meter, which is obviously what you want. So it is quite a big thing to do, but um, it's a luxury, I guess. You don't necessarily need any books here. AoE A1, I put mine in a stun set. So we've continuously got that chance to stun as we go through. Uh, fearsome Presence alongside that would actually be really cool if you just want to try and make a stun really hard and then drop turn meter. That's all she's in there for. Let other people do the damage. But if you want to ramp her up to a damage dealer as well, you go Helm Smasher and then you whack this ability on. We'll ignore 75% of the target's defense. You actually don't necessarily need to go Helm Smasher, but if you do, you're basically ignoring... Uh, nine or defense so very cool a2 as well soul bond in a stun set absolute beast um and if we go for another person in a stun set it's got to be bellower so bellower all aoe abilities lots of um cool abilities as well so decreased speed it's a weak version but it's still nice to have on these spiderlings weak decreased attack weak decreased defense just means you're going to take less damage and you're going to do more damage so there's nothing bad about any of these abilities. You put him in a stun set and he is going to just push out three, four stuns, every ability, and um, just help keep your team in the game. Really good champ. And then last but not least, you all know who's coming last because we can't talk about Spider without basically the legendary that is Coldheart. Not as easy to build as people think. Make sure you put an HP chest on her Make sure you get your crit rate to 70%. You only need 70 because the A3 has got a 30% extra chance to land. Make sure the accuracy is high enough to land your abilities. If you don't do those things, throwing loads more crit damage on her 
will literally make no difference. Her main reason for being in this fight is to drop turn meter by 100% and to do a nice little smack. So forget building attack in a build. Zero attack. Build HP. Build the right speed. Get your accuracy up. And then get crit rate to 70. Once you've done those four things, then you build crit damage. And then you start having fun. So yeah, Cold Heart, absolute beast. She's got to be in there because she's easily the best champion of that rarity to come in. So let's go into the epics then. And I'm going to start in the same faction. Probably my favorite epic for controlling spiderlings. Absolute beast of a champion, this one. So Silar has got a big version decrease speed for all enemies, two turns, and decreases turn meter at the same time. You would love to book this out. If you don't book it out, it's not the end of the world. But booking this skill is huge. Two turn cooldown takes it to a four. Decreasing speed and turn meter is just massive to give your team enough time to get the job done. Um, she also has got this decrease accuracy ability. I don't feel like you need to book this one out in full, but um, obviously decreasing the spiderlings accuracy means they're less likely to land their poisons on your tank, as long as your tank's got some resistance in there. And then just a straight AoE A1. She doesn't hit that hard, so you, you're better off putting her in a stun set or a day set, something like that, probably a stun set really. And just similar to with Bellower, when you do your abilities, good chance to stun up some of your enemy. Um, and you need enough accuracy to land this turn meter drop. But really strong champ. Next one up is going to be one of the newer champions. I love this guy. This guy for Spider, Anak, Akak. The, I'm just going to call him the Wender in. Um, hashtag confirmed it's a dude. We have got an AoE freeze on the A3. AoE freeze is just kind of kind of nutty. If you pair him with somebody else that does HP burn, the combination is mental. So if you book him, basically you've got yourself what a 90% chance to freeze on a free turn cooldown. You can again run him without books, but you're you're putting yourself in more danger, I guess. Um, Every time the freeze wears off, everybody in your team gets 10% turn meter. So if you're freezing a whole wave of spiders, you basically got yourself a full turn meter bar for everyone, which pretty much means that this has got one less turn cooldown, the way it works. So this guy is absolutely mental. If you pair him with someone that's doing HP burn, the HP burn will also kill your team. It's crazy. Um, it's got strengthen and uh, block debuffs as well. So blocking those poisons coming onto your team, really useful. Um, and then has got a, nothing really useful here, but absolutely insane. Force Affinity can be your Spiderling tank. Good base defense, good base HP. So it's got good stats to be the, the Spiderling tank as well. But yeah, um, literally like Spider 19, best champion. Spider 20, still really effective. You will find, because you, you do have to hit, um, but yeah, 75%, 70 percent chance, goes up to 90 of placing the freeze. Uh, you just got to be aware of weak affinity. But yeah, great champion. So the person I would pair him with, if you can, if you're running epics, is going to be Ultimate Gaelic. What a champion for Spider. Again, better if booked. Better if you can get a books into the A3. The other skills I wouldn't be that fussed about, but the A3 does make a big difference for you. AoE HP burn, very few champions have got this ability. Um, HP burn's one of the best ways to kill the spider. Yeah, every time any spiderling moves that's got an HP burn on, it will harm the main spider for percentage HP. It's huge. Anything level 17 to 20, this is a massive ability. Um, also, he can self buff, so he's got an increased attack ability. The only way this works on auto is if you click the spider and the little red cross goes under the spider before you get moving. So you can do it with macros, you can do it on something like blue stacks, but it's harder to do because you have to macro it so that it actually works properly. But yeah, if he increases his own attack here, make sure that you put his crit rate up. He needs crit rate to, to land this. He has to get a critical hit to get his increased attack. But you get your crit rate up, you get his accuracy up. Other than that, you don't need any damage. Don't build him with damage. You don't want his AoEs to hit hard. You just want them to apply the HP burn. 
Um, and he's got a bit of turn to feel in his A1 as well. Absolutely brilliant epic for this fight. And then the last two are kind of similar champions, really. So, oh no, sorry. They're not. I didn't say my other big boy. Uh, where was he? Night Revs. Misgrated Monster, sorry. Misgrated Monster coming in. My favourite spider champion. Probably my favourite spider champion in total. Like, if I'm looking on someone's account, this guy makes the difference. Looks absolutely sweet as well. Still love this aesthetic on this guy. His A2 is what it's all about. Stun and shield. Don't forget the stun. You need accuracy to land that stun. And the stun is a big part of his kit. The shield is huge. It means that your damage dealers can kind of get their job done without too much worry. Again, booking him is helpful, but it's not a necessity. Make sure you get his crit rate up. You make sure you get his HP up. Good speed. And you want, again, that kind of 10 times the level of uh, dungeon you're facing in terms of accuracy. So if you're facing uh, level 20, at least 200 accuracy to land that stun. The other cool thing about his kit is once he's done his stun, you put your ally protection out. Anyone who takes a hit that's, that's got ally protection on will be feared by his passive. So it's actually, again, you do need to make sure you've got your accuracy to make that work, I think. I'm not sure if that just happens, actually. But either way, get his accuracy up to get the stun off. But yeah, good champion. Absolutely like beast mode for Spider. So the last two, this is what I was talking about. Last two are both similar style champions. And I'm 50-50 on these two. They both bring their own um, ability. But you've got Stagnite as one or two um, here for decrease attack, decrease defense. It comes as a standard as 70% chance to land these abilities. Decrease attack means the spiderlings will hit you with a weaker hit. Decrease defense means you'll hit them harder. Okay, So you've got two abilities going up in one. Also a decreased speed on his A1. But there's a lot of books going on here. So there's quite a lot of, of bookage to get him to the right place. Um, and ideally you do book him. High base stats, so high base speed, high base defense, high base HP. And also got this kind of funky little uh, increased accuracy buff if someone doesn't land an ability, which is quite, quite cool. Uh, but yeah, overall insanely strong champion. Um, and I kind of pair him in the same boat with Tyrell who does a similar job, more defense-based, will do more damage. Um, he has got a 75% chance base level of placing his decrease attack. He won't place decrease, uh, sorry, decrease defense. He won't place decrease attack on the full enemy um, setup. So that's not coming into the fray, which means Stagnite is better at letting you take less damage. What Tyrell's better at is also dropping turn meter of the boss. So Stag brings a decreased speed. Tyrell brings a decreased turn meter. They're both really effective. I think if I had to choose between the two, I would pick Stagnite. I think the decreased speed is more effective than that decreased turn meter on a, what, four or five turn cooldown. Um, but he does also bring defense in all battles. They're both super good, really good. Um, and if you're thinking about legendaries, I'm not going to go into my legendary list because there's so many that could do this job. but the best ones really are people that are bringing either enemy max HP hits like your Septimus is or HP burns with team protection. So people like Tyrant, uh, Ignatius um, that are going to bring an, an HP burn that spreads to the whole enemy group. So there you go, guys. Good luck in the Spider Tournament. Hope that was helpful to you guys. I've been Hell Hades. I'll catch you later.